So the treatment's been accepted, now it's time to bid the job. This next tip I'm gonna give you is for any bid that you do, big or small. Essentially what you're doing is a brain dump. Think about the set, write everything that you see in your head down on a piece of paper. What you're doing is you're taking advantage of your creative prowess because those initial thoughts are typically creative and they will get lost as soon as you get caught up into the anxiety of the formal bid. A few other things that you're gonna to have to consider. What is the advance payment information about? Like, what's the expectations for the advance? Some agencies will give you 50% of the entire budget, which includes your fees. Some agencies will only give you 50% of the production costs or the below the line costs, which is what it's gonna to cost to produce the job and your fees aren't included in that. What is the accounting process? In other words, after you get your advance and you start on the job, when can you expect the final check? Is it take 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. This is critical information because you are gonna basically be funding this shoot until you get that final check. So how quickly do you need to turn around a bid? One to two days on a job of this size is probably appropriate. Smaller jobs you can turn around quicker. If it's something you've done before and you have a template for it, go ahead, bang it out, double check your numbers, triple check your numbers, and then send the bid in. Here's the most important thing to remember when you're bidding a job. Don't fake it. Put in everything that you think is gonna be required to make the job happen. If you try to avoid putting something in because you think it's going to cost too much, don't. You're dealing with people who are highly experienced and they'll see that you've omitted something and you're trying to think for them and that's just gonna make you look bad. So always put in everything that you think is gonna be required and then you can pull it out if necessary. The process is a back and forth. It's not like a one-time chance. Also, if a bid like this comes your way on a job this size, now's the time to call in a producer. I couldn't put this bid together by myself, so I called in a producer who's really, really skilled with this type of stuff, and we collaborated. I talked about what I wanted to see on the set, and he talked about what he thought we could put into the bid in terms of making the numbers work. This is a collaborative type of effort. Smaller bids, you can do yourself, especially if it's something you've done over and over again. Always remember to play to your strengths. And when you're talking to a producer who's helping you with the bid, make sure you tell them how you like to work so they can put the consideration into the numbers. It's not just photography that you're doing here, you're also creating a fun set, an efficient set, and these are the things that will add to your reputation and get you more work in the future. The first number that we came up with for the wearable technology job was $194,000. As I was talking to my producer, we were looking at the $194,000 and we thought that might be a little bit on the high side to win this job. So we looked at how we could lower that number just a little bit. The second revision of the job that we did reflects that everybody will be hired as a local. The first version of it had us flying to a different city and flying all the principal people, the photographer, the producer, and the first assistant. We wanted to shave some money off it, so we talked about hiring everybody as a local, which means you're gonna to go to the town, pay for your own plane fare, and then hire all the crew that you need locally. Then we sent the bid off to Susie, and she responded with some notes. Let's take a look at those notes now. Hi Lou, this looks good, some questions. Casting, will this cover two rounds of casting? Talent, usually talent is fee plus agency commission of 20%. So a more usual fee is $1,000 plus 20 equals $1,200 per talent. And the kids would be 750 plus 20 equals $900. With kids in the mix, we will need a studio teacher. All talent needs to be paid through a payroll company, such as Extreme Reach, which adds approximately 23% to the bottom line, but provides all payments and tax services plus workers comp. Crew also needs to be paid through a payroll company so they are covered for workers' comp. Motorhome. We will need two motorhomes at the boot camp and hiking locations, one for wardrobe, makeup and talent, and one for client, photographer, and crew, mostly for bathrooms. Wardrobe and props are a bit low. Can you add a bit more in for both of them? And please note that the final bill will need to be for actual expenses submitted with backup receipts. All overages will need to be approved before they are incurred. There is no 10% contingency. Thanks, Susie. The critical thing to look at here on this response from Susie is that there is going to need to be actual expenses submitted in order to get the final invoice paid. There's two ways to bid on a job. You can either estimate the job or you can bid the job. An estimate is exactly what we've done here. We're estimating the expenses. But at the end, we have to submit all the actual money spent on the job in order to get our final bill. When you bid a job, you say that you're going to do it for a certain amount of money and the client agrees to pay that money. If you go over budget, you take the loss. If you come in under budget, then you reap the rewards of the profit. 
So two different ways to think of things. In this particular job, Susie's saying that this is an estimate and what we're gonna do is submit actual expenses to get our final invoice paid, and it's gonna require support, which means all the receipts have to be put into a binder and categorized so they can refer back to them and cross-check them. Sometimes a job will have an automatic 10% contingency, which means you can go over budget by 10% without having to get any sort of approval. In this situation, that 10% contingency doesn't exist, and any overages are gonna to have to be approved on location while you're shooting. Considering the notes from Susie, we revised our budget, and the final number we came up with was about $195,000. The actual budget, which was not revealed to us by the agency that they had for the shoot, was $200,000, so we came in really, really close. Now we're gonna take a look at the breakdown of the bid and how that all worked. <laughs> 